day viewers. We're at Salzburg Rosenheim and we're going to have a look at the DB BR111 and see how to drive it. So let's jump in the cab. Now pantograph's already up, already ready to go. So put the reverser in and move that to forwards. Open the brake key or set that to on. Now, right now, we probably want to put a little bit of brake on, even though it is holding. So let's just put on driver's brake three. And we can open our doors. Oops, I'm going to do that. All right, now let's put signal lights normal. That's fine. If you need lights in the darks, so you can. your instrument lights are on here. And if you need cab light or a desk light, it's desk light up, cab light down. So we don't really need that at the moment. But your passengers might want some lights. Next thing is to set our headlights to be actually headlights. And we will go to the other cab. Never seems to matter which way you come into this. It always seems to be the other cab. It's just luck, I guess. We shall come in here. And there's a couple of things. So there's the PZB mode switch down here with O or M, depending on what you're carrying. And over on this side, there is CIFA and in Dussy, which is PZB. So it's the left hand of the two in Dussy switches. You don't need to turn on that one. All right, let's go back out of the cab again. The two cabs are more or less identical and they operate the same way. We don't appear to have unlocked our doors when I uh, turned the controller. So I guess I didn't press the unlock button, did I? There'll be a switch here somewhere for that, which I haven't touched, it's probably up here. Uh, doors, there we go. Open. Right, so we selected the side over here and I forgot to open them over there. That's life, isn't it? All right, the signal ahead of us is still red. There is a destination display, so you can choose should you wish to. The game does set it correctly, though, to when you start. And you can clear it and you can confirm whatever was selected. So that takes effect outside. We should see that. We do. Heading to Salzburg. There are blinds. There are some indicators up here, which I don't find myself looking at terribly much, but they do flash things on and off. So have a look. Appreciate the effort. Top speed for the train is 160. Contact signaler is down here on this phone and the usual PZB acknowledge, release and override. If you need the pantograph, it's here. And if you blow the MCB, it's here. The master circuit breaker or main circuit breaker. All right, we should be pretty much ready to go. So I'll lock the doors this time with my keyboard, which does both controls for you. And we can release the brakes and get moving. Now, the throttle's an interesting one. I've just put it straight into run up. I should probably explain it to you. So it's got an off position, and you'll notice we've got zero Z here, that's for our taps. Run down counts taps down, and run up counts taps up. And there's a hold position in the middle. It's a bit hard to get onto with the rail driver, but you can get there if you try hard enough. There we go. And that'll just hold the current tap. Uh, if you throttle up too fast on this thing, it just fights you a bit and doesn't do it. And if you find yourself in a situation where the tap count is going up, but your power meter is not, that likely means you're locked out because of brakes or doors, and you'll need to fix that. All right, we are in monitoring on PZBs. Now, I'm going to go into the second part of the throttle. That's safer, so I'll acknowledge that. Now, I'm not going to acknowledge PZB on this signal if it wants me to. I don't think it actually will want me to. I'll do what the helper says, though, and release. Now, in the second part of the throttle, you're just selecting the percentage of power that you want, and it's taking care of the taps for you. And it just gradually taps up. It might tap up and tap down and tap up and tap down. It's just coping with wheel slip and the like. And you can go right up to 100%. It will not blow the MCB. Now, this time, see if it's just come on. I'm not going to acknowledge it because I want it to stop the train to show you what to do. There we go. Okay, so CIFA has just applied the brakes. You can see our brake pipe's gone to zero and our brakes have come on. So all we have to do, throttle back to off, acknowledge CIFA with Q, B or circle, depending on your flavor. Give the brakes a chance to come back up. 
and once they release we'll be able to throttle up and move. Now this train just while we're waiting does also have dynamic brakes so you can use these here and it has automatic dynamic brakes as well so if you apply the air brake it also applies the, the dynamic brakes. All right, they're coming off now they're coming off at this end anyway might be a little while before they come off at the other end but we can try we can run up a little let's go back into hold come on sit in hold go on there we go got it a little finicky with the rail driver oh, let's just put it into the power section we shall do that all right off we go so now you've seen how to reset from a CIFA induced emergency brake. But what about a human induced emergency brake? So let's do that now, now that we're getting moving. The emergency brake's down here. We'll just flip that onto applied and you can see that our brake pipe has gone to zero. We're automatically tapping down, but we do need to put our throttle to off. We heard CIFA briefly sound then, but it's cleared itself because we stopped. Now, Let's pop that into release. Now, one of two things happens here. It either automatically just starts pumping it back up again and you'll be home and hosed. It'll release just like it did with CIFA. If it doesn't do that, and I've had it on a couple of occasions it not do that, then just put your uh, driver's brake on and release it again and it will come down. All right. I'm just going to use the power part of the throttle. So it's a, a percentage throttle like most modern trains have. And you'll see it's managing the taps for me. So it's in tap two at the moment. It's getting some power. It's gone to three. It's got a bit of wheel slips. It's dropped back to two, three, two, three, two. It almost got to four for a moment there. It will do it. Let's power up a little bit. There we go. That's giving it a bit of a kick in the pants. Now, if you get yourself into a, a lockout situation, so let's just put this throttle to 100% and we'll let it climb up with the taps. If I apply the brake now with the throttle on, I'll just clear CIFA. You can see the taps have automatically gone back to zero. And if I release the brakes, it starts tapping up again. But you'll notice that the power gauge is not doing anything. So it's not really tapping up because it's locked out. So what you have to do is put your throttle back to off. Off. Thank you, rail driver. Wait for the taps to come down to zero. And don't be in a hurry here. Clear that safer. Give it a few seconds. And now we'll be able to power up again. And you'll notice that the taps are going up and the power meter is going up as well. So we are actually powering now. Now we're going to cruise towards Bad Endorf now. And when we get there, I will uh, utilize the signal just before Bad Endorf. To show you how to recover from a PZB induced situation where it does an emergency brake for you. The Ebola screen doesn't do anything and neither does the communication screen so I wouldn't worry too much about those. Now we're coming up to an 80 zone, so I'll just throttle off, clear the CIFA, just brake just a little. And bring our speed down a bit. You notice the dynamic brake has in fact come on there. Even though I'm using the air brake, it's also using the dynamic brake at the same time. Now, don't be in a hurry to start throttling again after you've braked, because you'll get locked out. And then you'll just need to tap down again and come back. 
So we're coming into a 140 zone now. And it should be safe enough to start powering up. Lots of happy clunks and ticks behind us. Big fans coming on to keep the traction motors cool. And we'll just take it straight up to 100. Is this one, unlike the 110, doesn't blow its MCB. I've never had it happen. If it does happen to you, it's that switch there. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but you can see my brake handle jiggling around there. It's reading the rail driver, and the train wants to be in running, but the rail driver position is in release, because if I put the rail driver into running, the uh, traction lock system cuts in because it thinks I'm trying to apply the brakes because I moved the handle. I'm hoping that gets addressed, but not at the moment. All right, we've reached our speed, so we'll just power down quite a lot, and you can see it's automatically tapping down for us. And there's Cifer again, so we'll acknowledge that. There's a railway gate that was not finished closing. I have noticed that some of the gates get confused when you're running above whatever speed it was expecting you to run at. So we're slowing down a little bit much. I'll just power up a little bit more. You want to maintain about 135 to 137 or so. That keeps you nice and safe in the case of sudden gradient changes. You don't want to get too close to 140. This route does have speed magnets. So if you run over a speed magnet and you are speeding, it will give you a nice big emergency brake. In fact, we are speeding at the moment, so I hope we don't find one. Now, we have got a 110 zone coming. There's Cifa again. The lovely Cifa. So let's just do a little bit of braking. Now, with the dynamic brakes, you'll notice that doesn't come on straight away, and the taps have to go down to zero. So if you were throttling when you applied the brake then you have to wait for the taps to drop down to zero before the dynamics do anything. You should better release that now and let the residual braking effort take care of the rest of the speeding down to 110. Gravity will probably help too, because we're going uphill. I haven't taken you on a tour of the motor room because you can't go in there. Probably means there's a toilet inside. Alrighty, this speed down here does have a magnet, but we don't have to acknowledge because it's only a warning. You only have to acknowledge signs if they have a magnet, and you only have to acknowledge adverse signals. This train does not have AFB or LZB. Some 111 models did, but not all of them. There's some uh, PZB speed detection loops back there on the magnets, and we didn't trigger them, so all good. I'm put a little bit of power on now, if I can try and get into the hold position, which the rail driver's fighting me just a little bit. Oh, just There we go, it's sitting in hold now. Just a little bit of power on, because we're slowing down a little bit too much. Cifa. So it's up to you whether you use it in the tap up, tap down positions or whether you use it in uh, the power band part of the throttle. Both work equally well. Automatic tapping or manual tapping. Just depends how involved you want to be, I imagine. If you want a more manual driving experience, use the tap up, tap down, run or run up and run down. If you don't want a, that level of manual control, then use the power section.
excuse the cough there, I have been talking all day for work, and now I'm recording this tutorial. Look at that, I've done 111.1 kilometres. It's actually kind of good, because often those rewards happen uh, at the wrong moment. We're coming into Bad Endorf now, and we should get a area where we either have to slow down or we have an adverse signal, one or the other, coming into Bad Endorf. I'm not going to acknowledge it. So if I acknowledged it, we'd just carry on as usual. We'd have to obey whatever speed limit instruction it gave. But what I want to show you is how to recover when PZB whacks you. Need a bit more power because we're on a steeper section and we're still slowing down. It is quite a handful to manage this train to uh, keep it running to time. It's a bit of a slug on the power fest and its uh, brakes are a little spongy. Some nice localised assets up there. And we did see some distant mountains before as well, which is nice. Alright, so we're coming up to a magnet that I need to acknowledge. Now, I'm not going to. It says acknowledge 1000 hertz on the helper, and there goes PZB. PZB has in fact whacked us. And you can see the taps are coming down. The brake pipe has been fully discharged. And the brakes are on very, very hard. And they're now starting to come down a little. Put your throttle to off, acknowledge the PZB, and then use the release button. I hadn't quite stopped yet. Here's the release button now. You have to wait until you have completely stopped. Now you wait for the brakes to charge back up. You'll notice that they are releasing by themselves. So the brake pipe's charging up. We can hear the compressor behind us. And when that gets up to about four, you'll see the brakes start to release. There they go. Now, you can't power up until the brakes are mostly released, which is problematic because we're on a hill. So they're almost there. If you power up too early, you won't be able to power. I'm going to try and do it now. Let's see how we go. It is powering. Good. And I'll give it a bit more. Hopefully we won't roll back. It's trying. It's trying some more. Now, you can barely see it, but the 70 and 85 are flashing as well, so we're in monitoring now, because we were naughty. So I'll have to keep an eye on that, make sure I don't go over 45. Now, the helper's telling me up on the top right there, under the track monitor, that it's not safe to release, and my speed limit is 45. That last signal was green, and the next one is green, I can see on the track monitor, so I probably could safely release it. And speed up a bit more but uh, there's no real need we're just coming into a 60 zone with a stop anyway it's CIFA again otherwise known as the fun police the CIFA and PZB brothers they just like pushing you around and take away all your fun and joy oh dear you know what I just did I just went over 45 didn't I how clever was that? Alright, same again. Once we're stopped, we can use the release. And it's now saying we can release it, so release again to, to release the restriction. And when the brakes come off, we will accelerate again towards bad end off. Now, because I've released it, we're not in monitoring now, so I can just accelerate to my heart's content. And I will. Brakes are almost off there. We can probably power up. Yep, we're getting tapping and we're getting power on the power meter. So it's just got to write for that right moment when the brakes are almost off, just before you roll backwards. It's struggling a bit with this hill. Give it a bit more. It's a slight rollback. Come on, you can do it. Come on. You're going to have to go to another tap to make us move. Let's see if we can push the issue. There we go. It's getting a little bit of wheel slip. It'll do it. 
I'm confident. There we go. Lovely. I haven't actually tried this in the snow. That could be interesting. That could be quite a bit of fun to get moving again on a gradient in the snow with this because it's a little bit finicky. So I learned a lesson there. I should have released it when I could because then I wouldn't have got whacked. So you go, you've had two examples of how to release from PZB-induced emergency braking in a couple of minutes from each other. Sifa. Sifa is a little quiet on this train, so once the traction motors and things are blowing out your eardrums, you do need to pay a bit of attention to the Sifa light because you may not hear it. So I've just throttled off because we're coming up to Bad Endorf. We'll let gravity slow us down. We're already monstrously late because of the emergency stops that this incredibly incompetent driver has done. And now we'll be coming into a normal service stop. A bit of gentle braking. I did mention the brakes are like a sponge, didn't I? Alright, maybe we'll do a lot of braking then. There's Sefer again. Sefer does self reset if you actually stop before it beeps. As they say, that'll do. Objective complete. So we'll get the doors open. And that's it for this tutorial. I think I've covered pretty much everything. Oh, I didn't cover shutting down. So why don't we do that? So we've got our brakes. We're already in full service, I think. Yes, we are. So our throttle is off. So we'll bring our reverser back to the off position. And take that out. And turn the driver's brake key off. So now you would be right if you're getting ready to change ends and head down to the cab car at the other end or just the end or other end of the locomotive. Perhaps you're doing some shunting or something like that. All right. Well, there we go. Let's go out. The DB BR111. Now you know how to drive the beast. That's it for the tutorial. Hope this has been helpful for you. If you need any hints or you've got questions, just chuck them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help you. See you later. Bye now. We played a game.